Are you worried about escalating food prices and food shortages? Well, I have a couple of friends that are gonna solve that problem for you. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Kyleen, and today I'm really excited because I have my friends Debbie and Jenny with me, and they are fantastic when it comes to food storage. And we thought, as I've been reading through all the comments and trying to respond, which I'm so sorry that I'm behind, but um, I, I just feel like there's so many things that um, people don't understand about food storage. It's like it's this huge secret. So today, we are going to talk about all the food storage secrets and answer a lot of the questions that we have found in the comments. So for the first thing that we want to talk about is why should we have food storage? And Jenny, you should start that one off. So uh, this last week, my husband went to the doctor because his elbow was hurting him. And the doctor said, okay, you're gonna have surgery tomorrow. We didn't have a lot of time to prep. Luckily, it wasn't, it wasn't a big surgery, but it was very sudden for our family. And so that means he it will not be able to work for the next couple of weeks. And I was a little worried because I couldn't go to the grocery store, I couldn't leave him alone, but I still had to feed my family. Luckily, I had a big stash of things in my basement that I was able to pull out and feed my family. We had canned spaghetti sauce and spaghetti. We had, um, we had pancakes for dinner because I had pancake mix and syrup. And we were able to not go to the grocery store and still eat normal foods. And the kids didn't even, didn't even realize that we were so stressed. And I think that's a super good point because so often when we think about food storage, everybody's applying this end of the world scenario. And, uh, and quite frankly, day-to-day -day life and those little emergencies are some of the biggest threats that we have because they're gonna happen, right? They just happen. And so we need to be prepared for all of them. So why have food storage? Right now, we can see that there are food shortages coming up. Absolutely, you hear it all over and that can be concerning. Um, and I think that it's really important that we just have the peace to be able to take care of our families. So we're gonna talk a little bit about food storage and I, before you get all uptight and think you have to run out and buy Mylar bags, let's talk about some of the best ways to do food storage. And that is actually with just the food that you buy every day. I think it's important we, we can call it a prepper pantry or a well-stocked pantry, but it's just building your reserve of the foods that you eat every day. So for instance, I have a friend, her name is Katrina and she's amazing, but what she does is her family loves shrimp scampi and she can make that using basic ingredients that are shelf stable. And she um, has a year's supply, so she can make this dinner 52 times with the foods that she just has in her food storage. So she knows that once a week, she's always got a meal. And none of that food's ever gonna go bad because it's something that they eat on a regular basis. And in fact, Debbie has a really cool book that she has created for shelf-stable foods. So hang on just a second. I want Debbie to get that book. Okay, that was magic. <laughs> All right, so I was watching some YouTube channels and they were having a shelf stable recipe collaboration. And the first Tuesday of each month, they put out a recipe. And all of the recipes are things that you would have in your pantry. Every recipe are things that I could just go into my pantry and pull from. Nothing was fresh dairy, nothing was fresh fruits or vegetables it was all things that are shelf stable and you can make it i printed them off because my fear is that if something were to happen i might not have the internet and can't jump on there and get the recipe so i printed mine off and i think that's great and especially to have like all of your favorites because we all do have our favorite recipes and what can you do to make do something alternate so that you can have the ingredients shelf stable right and we'll talk a little bit about that but it doesn't cost a lot of money to build your pantry because just when you're looking at these are just a few foods that i took out of my pantry chocolate of course was very definitely high on on that list but 
a lot of these items can store for a really long time. Now, this one is not, you're not gonna get a bag of chips to last for a year. So that's not a short-term item, right? Well, it's a really short-term item. But soy sauce, I don't have to repackage this in any way. We make fried rice all the time. And so we go through a lot of soy sauce and this is shelf stable and actually it's indefinite. Like this, unless you do something bad to it, it's never gonna go bad. Um, the canned goods, they'll last for a really long time. So I have a freezer with meat in it, right? And that, I use it a lot. But I've got, also got canned meat that's shelf stable. Um, and all of this is just stuff that you can just go out to the store and purchase um, things like baking powder so that you can use all of your dry goods. Um, because if you have baking powder and flour, wow, there's a lot that you can do. But baking soda will pretty much store forever where baking powder will lose its ability to leaven. Um, see how this bag is puffy? A lot of the foods that you just buy at the store are um, packed with nitrogen. They're nitrogen flushed. And the reason why they do that is because they want this to last on the shelf as long as it can. So believe it or not, even though this might have a best if used by date, that's only a year and a half or two years out, if you store this cool, it'll store for a good four years or so, as long as it's cool. If it's warm, if you live in Phoenix, I'm sorry, all bets are off. <laughs> um, so while these cans of food can last for a long time, something like this box of stuffing mix, it's not gonna last as long. You might get a year, maybe past the date, but it's best to rotate through that. So what I strongly encourage everybody to do is to decide how long you need your food storage to last. I personally think a year supply is a really good number because that can pretty much see you through almost any crisis. Because like if your husband was out of work for a really long time, they, they wouldn't have to worry about eating, right? Um, One thing that I love to do, when I find like a new thing that, I, that our family loves, I'll buy two of them when I get them, if I know that we like it. And then I've got one in the basement, like for just in case, because we live quite a ways from the grocery store and I can't just run to the store if we're out of something and the kids want to have it. So I've got an extra and then the next time I go to the grocery store, I replace my extra in the basement. And I don't, I, I'm not gonna buy a whole year's supply of a lot of those things, but I try to have an extra so that I don't have to run to the grocery store with rising prices and gas and all those different things. Because some things it doesn't make sense to have a year supply, right? But um, it always makes a lot of sense to have a backup. And okay, so these are really cute little tubs. These are from Costco, but you can get them a lot of different places. But a lot of times in your everyday food supply, you're gonna have things that, like these packets that you don't have a really good way to store. Storing them in something like this is a really good idea. And I would actually put some of these other items in here. And then when you put it on the shelf, you can kind of see what's in them, right? And of course, this isn't organized, but you can take best advantage of your shelf space like that. And then also, so we're, these are everyday foods, right? So decide how, what you can do. And like Jenny was saying, buy an extra when you go out because everything costs a lot. The last time I went to the store, I was flabbergasted. I'm just like, oh, it's getting oh. high. It, it's getting more and more expensive. And I was watching a news program and they were talking about eggs going to $12 a, um, a dozen. Wow. And that is like insane. But quite frankly, I should show you here. Well, let's. Okay, I don't have to worry about it because we have chickens. And if our chickens stop laying, we have freeze dried a lot of extra eggs. And this will last for 25 years. Now I know not everybody can get a freeze dryer. Um, but for me, this is a really good solution. If you click the card in the corner, I have compiled a list of, I can't remember how many it is, like it's 25 or maybe it's 50. I can't remember. It's a lot um, of egg substitutes that are shelf stable that you can use when you run out. Now you can't make scrambled eggs with them, but it might be helpy and helpful. And like what Debbie said with this, um, if you go to the website, there's a PDF you can print and then you could put Hold it in your that book. that thought, Kylie. Hold that <laughs> It's magic again! <laughs> I am kind of old school, <gasps> and I like having a printed version. Because one, my memory's not that great, 
And I never know, because she did make a really long list of egg substitutes, but I don't know what I'm gonna have when I need that substitution. Exactly. So I printed off a hard copy. I have a three ring binder and in it, it says substitutions and they are all listed right there. Plus maybe I have something, but Jenny doesn't. So she might have like lemon juice and I can tell her how to use lemon juice to substitute an egg. See, that's awesome. That makes me feel really good that it's in her book. <laughs> Yay! It's a really good resource, so make sure that you go in and you look at that. Um, so that's the first step, is just to beef up your pantry with whatever it is that you eat on a regular basis. And then hold on just a second, and let's move on to longer term. One of the cheapest things you can buy, even with rising prices, is rice and beans and they're good for storage long term or short term because they can store for a long time. Um, so I'll go to Costco or Sam's Club or even Walmart and buy a big bag of rice and I don't have a huge pantry like Kylene has but I will fill up a big mason jar with my rice and put the rest of it in a bucket in my basement and then I've got some upstairs ready to use and I can just refill it when it's, when it's empty and that works for my space. Um, and rice and beans can be used in a lot of different ways in, in a lot of different recipes and they're filling and they are less expensive than a lot of other things that you can buy right now. Okay, and so fun, I have fun little fact is something that's coming up. So we have our favorite restaurant and we are gonna go, the chef there has agreed. Are they, are they chef at Mexican restaurants? Are they chefs? Anyway. I don't know. He's amazing and he totally agreed to let us do a video on how he makes refried beans and how he makes the rice for his restaurant because those are both things that are just absolutely delicious and yet we can make them in our own homes. And what did this have, like 202 servings? Yeah. I can't remember, it was something like astronomical, right? Mm -hmm. for, for the cost, when you're looking at being able to feed your family, I know rice and beans sound boring, but you can um, supplement it with a lot of different things and have that be some of the base of your calories and you can make it through it, right? So um, let's talk about packaging it. So we don't actually, if I were to just take this and put it on my shelf, it's going to have oxygen degrade it, and so we, we really don't want that. If you're looking at using this bag in three to six months, I wouldn't repackage it. But if, if it's anything longer than that, you might really want to think about repackaging it because the two threats are bugs and um, oxygen. Oxygen will degrade it. And so let's talk about that for just a second. So what you need is an airtight container. We can put it in like mylar. Um, mylar bags are good, um, very good, but they're also expensive, right? And so if you don't have a lot of money... And they've been sold out on a lot of websites. It's true. On, on a lot of my know Wallaby, we love Wallaby, but um, they've been out a lot because there's a lot of people who are looking out there and seeing what's going on, and we've got supply shortages as well as a higher demand. But things like mason jars, or even like the spaghetti jars that, that your spaghetti sauce comes in, any glass jars, that's a really good thing to store them in. But you're gonna want to treat for bugs because you don't want bugs growing, right? And if you remove that oxygen, then it's gonna store longer. The best idea is to use an oxygen absorber um, because that both takes care of the bugs and it takes care of the oxygen. If you use an oxygen absorber, you don't have to use anything else at all. Don't have to freeze it. Right, absolutely. So if you are gonna freeze it, be careful with the glass jars, but you can also do it in these peat bottles. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and it, I have an entire post on how to store in glass bottles and how to store it in these plastic bottles. And these are great because these are free, right? It doesn't cost anything. You can use an oxygen absorber. If you can't, if you can't get these or you can't afford them and all you can afford is this free juice bottle or soda bottle, you wanna fill it up and then to kill the bugs, you're gonna, after you filled it up like this, put it in the freezer for at least 24 hours, right? Um, and then you're gonna take it out and let it thaw for 24 hours and then you're gonna put it back in. Usually I leave it in for a couple days so that um, I make sure that it freezes, but what it does is when you first freeze it, that kills whatever um, live adults are in here. And then when you thaw it, it tells the eggs that it's spring and then they hatch 
and then um, the second freeze will kill them. And then you're still gonna have oxygen in here, but quite frankly, this is from 2007, and I just used something the other day from 2006, and it was just fine. So if you wanna go free, this is a great way to go free. Now there's a couple things. This is something called diatomaceous earth. And you can mix this in with your grain. Be careful because you don't want to breathe it in because it can hurt your lungs. And it will kill the bugs. It doesn't kill them till they're an adult. But personally, I don't want this mixed in with my food storage. I, so I just had a comment about, do I use them both? No, I don't use this. I use this in my garden to kill my squash bugs. If you were to put it in with your grain, then do you rinse it off once you open your grain? It is edible as long as you get the, the food grade diatomaceous earth. There's a okay. pool grade, which actually is poison, so you don't want to use the pool grade. But um, no, you don't usually rinse it off. You actually grind it and eat it. Hmm. I don't want to eat it. It's safe to eat. It won't hurt you. I don't want to do it. And the other thing you'll hear a lot is bay leaves. Put bay leaves in them. And um, I wouldn't do this. And the reason why is because there's no documented proof showing that it works, right? Talk about grandma. My grandma has stored her flour with a bay leaf in it, but she did not have access to mylar bags or to oxygen absorbers. That was all she had, and that's what her mom had done, so that's what she was taught to do, but right now we know that there's really no scientific proof that it does anything. And when we're, our food storage is so valuable, I, I just wouldn't mess with it, right? Um, now, you kind of think about it like we know that a lavender plant, one of the great be benefits of lavender is that it repels insects like mosquitoes and all kinds of things. It'll attract the pollinators, but it will repel them. Just because that's how that plant functions doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna function that way in a can where you're, they can't go any place else. They're just there. So is it gonna kill them? I don't know, but enough. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that. Now, there's all kinds of different varieties of ways that you can um, store your food. This is one of the number 10 cans that comes from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, which is my very favorite place to get food storage. They only carry the basics, like these are dried onions. It smells so good. <laughs> um, but, and this is how I keep them on my shelf. I open them and I use them. So this was off my pantry shelf. If, for in order to store it long term, it has to have the lid sealed like this one does. Um, and that means that these beans will last 25 to 30 years. Do I need to store them for 25 to 30 years? I hope not. I hope I'm rotating better than that. And I'm not storing food that I'm not going to normally eat, right? But number 10 cans are a great way to get it. And, and this is actually the very cheapest. Look for, I'll leave a link, but the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has home storage centers. And you can go and visit one and buy whether or not you're a member of the church or you can order online from them. And their delivery fee is $3. It's super cheap. Super cheap. It's super cheap for what, for what you're getting. Um, when I buy like sp spices in bulk, I repackage them in this jar or in jars. And I like to put, leave the label on, but I put an oxygen absorber in them or I vacuum seal them. You can totally vacuum seal stuff, right? If you have a vacuum sealer, it's not quite as good as an oxygen absorber, but you could totally do that. Um, and you can re go ahead. And on that, like what I saw the other day was a lady had a big jar and when she opens up her fruit or anything that she has pressure canned or water bath canned or steam canned, you can use this lid, this flat again for dry. You can't use it again if you're canning with it, but you can use it again if you're using it with a vacuum sealer. Yeah, absolutely. So I reuse my lids all the time for dry pack. I never do it for wet pack. Um, and a lot of times if you just use an oxygen absorber in this jar, it'll suck this down, right? And so you can, you can see that it's all, all good. So long-term food storage, do you guys have anything else to say about that? Okay, I do one other thing. So this is cocoa, it's in its original package. Um, and this will last for several years. But if I repackage it into like mylar, it'll last indefinitely. Cocoa will pretty much last forever. But do I really need to do that? So am I rotating through this on a regular basis? You know, I eat a lot of chocolate. Um, <laughs> and so um, if I'm only keeping a year supply of this, I can do that easily without transferring it into a Mylar bag. If I want 
a five-year supply, that's going to be a little bit trickier and I should transfer it. The only other thing I would add is like if I was to buy this big bag of rice, if I'm putting it in something, I would cut the nutritional value and maybe the cooking directions and tape it to the front whoops, of whatever I'm packaging it in. That's a great idea. So That's a great idea. So you always know. Because I might know, but what if I'm the one that something has happened to and it's my husband or my granddaughters that have to come and fix the rice? Very, very good point. Okay, we have one other thing to talk about, and I think this is actually the most important. Okay, the biggest food storage secret that we want to share with you actually isn't much of a secret, but it's the most important, at least I feel it is, and that is um, being able to produce and preserve the food that you make, right? The food that you can grow because that is sustainable. You can do that over and over again. No matter how much I store of rice and beans, eventually, we're going to use it up. But if I'm producing every single year and I'm bottling or canning or whatever I'm doing, um, it'll, it'll last forever. So we have a freeze dryer and I know not everybody can do a freeze dryer, um, but you can also dehydrate. I didn't bring up any of my dehydrated foods up here, but dehydrated, freeze dried um, foods are, are great. And then bottled foods. So um, these are peaches that we bottled and these are peaches that I freeze dried. And one of the things that I really liked about the freeze dried peaches is that I can do it with the skin on and the skin tastes amazing. It adds to the flavor. It does, and they're so good. And so I just actually wait till they're the perfect ripeness and then I slice them up, no, I wash them and I slice them up and stick them in the freeze dryer. And then they come out and I put an oxygen absorber in here. Sometimes I do vacuum seal these in the freeze dryer as well as the oxygen absorber. But my family has lived off of bottled peaches for years because they're, they're so amazing, right? Um, same thing, so here's freeze dried raspberries and regular raspberries. This is actually bison meat that we freeze dried that my brother um, made into taco meat and because we have a freeze dryer, I made a little deal with them. I'd freeze dry it if I got to keep some. So it, it's just- But fun. freeze drying isn't the only way to preserve your, your we, we grow, we raise animals, we raise cows and pigs. And, and so we'll, you know, cook up, my mom's done some sloppy joe meat lately. And bottled it. And bottled sure it. Canned it. So it's shelf stable instead of just being in the freezer. Or right. if you don't have a freeze dryer. And even in the freezer, quite frankly, you can count that as part of your food storage, right? Because you guys have the animals all year round, right? Mm -hmm. So you grow them every spring and summer, and then that's how you eat, fall yeah. and winter. Yep. And I think too, like, I went somewhere the other day and somebody was nice enough to give me some tomatoes. I had bottles at home, I had lids at home. I went right home and bottled the tomatoes. If I had have had to maybe go to Walmart and buy the bottles, they might not have had any. So I think your food storage is maybe something you need to store. Like <laughs> the supplies, your, you, yeah, need supplies you need. The supplies you need, the lids, yes. the rings, the bottles, the, the Mylar bags, the oxygen absorbers. We need a stash of that at home because you never know when you're gonna be gifted something. With, with you know spring and summer coming up, maybe a neighbor is nice enough to share their produce with you and you need to be ready to have a plan of how can I preserve this for my family. Right, because food is becoming more and more valuable. Mm -hmm. We've lived in a society that has wasted food for a really long time. Yeah. And I think those days might be coming to a close. So as we produce things, we need to make sure that, that we're able to preserve them and share them right to the very best of our ability. Now we did a video on a solar dehydrator it, that we that we made that works really well. That doesn't require electricity. So um, I'll try and leave a link to that. Um, and dehydrators are a lot less expensive than freeze dryers, and you could absolutely do that. And you could bottle. And um, today, actually, the noise that you hear in the background, they just buried another freezer for us so that we could actually have another free root cellar, right? So there are all kinds of different ways that you can accomplish this. And even if you're just growing a garden just so that you can eat just during that time, then you've got a little bit of extra because those beans and rice, how much better are they gonna be with some pico or some salsa mm -hmm. or you know some corn or all kinds of different things like that. Well, and 
Jenny wanted to buy a freeze dryer and it's just me and my husband and I didn't think I would use one enough so I went in a fourth of Jenny's freeze dryer and then whatever we do I get a fourth of whatever comes out of it it's a four it's a tray plan. she gets three of the trays and I get one of the trays if it's at her home she's doing it she's buying the produce or whatever and then I get one bag if it's at my house and I've bought the produce, she gets the bags. I think that's great. And yeah. then you guys can both be building your food storage, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, great. You just have to kind of think outside the box and how can I make this work? So, okay, I'm gonna ask both of you, what is the one thing, the one piece of advice that you would give to people about food storage? You just need to start. I had a neighbor that kept calling and saying, I just don't know where to start. I just don't know where to start. So we started a group text and every Monday, I sent out a text that says, what is the thing you're gonna buy this week? We've tried to keep it under $20, but it's interesting as the texts come in like, well, I was just at the store and they have chicken on sale. And then we all know about the sell on chicken or, you know, somebody has this item on sale but even if you can only spend five dollars a week go and buy two extra tubes of toothpaste or whatever it is but it's just kind of having that little bit of motivation you've just got to take that step thank you my biggest thing would be to store things that you're going to eat like kyleen had some some spam that is not something that my kids <laughs> would ever eat so i'm not going to buy it i'm going to buy something else that I know I'm gonna use. Because if I, if I need to, if it's part of my food storage, I need to make sure we're gonna eat it. Because you've heard for years and years, well, if we're hungry enough, we'll eat it. I, I don't know if I believe that, and I don't know if that's where I wanna spend my money. Because money yeah. is too hard to come by. Yeah. Okay, Jenny totally stole mine. <laughs> because that's what I was gonna say. And the spam is for Sam, because he's the only one in the family that eats it. But he makes spam and rice that he loves. And pretty much you can stay on the shelf forever. <laughs> Which it might if Sam's not around. Anyway, um, I, I would just strongly encourage you to do something, right? Just a little step, whatever it is that you can do, because I know right now life is a little bit overwhelming. Um, but we got this, we got this. The secret to food storage is that you need to do it and make it tailored to your family. Kind of like what Jenny was saying, only get the stuff that you're gonna eat. Don't get something, I, one time I bought salmon because it was on sale, it was this canned salmon. Well, when I bought it, I didn't know that it had bones in it, like bones and skin, it was gross. And so, and I know some of you eat that and I applaud you, but I don't. Mm -hmm. And so it sat on my shelf till it got old and then it ended up getting fed to the cats, right? So uh, store the things that you're going to eat. Get busy, do something today and work with your neighbors. Share, like share the yeah. secrets. When something's on sale, help, yeah. help people understand that and just work together. Share freeze dryers or, or can with somebody. There's a lot of things that we can do to really um, take control of our own food. And I encourage you to do that. So now for the question of the day, what is your biggest secret when it comes to food storage? Comment below and thanks for being part of the solution.